Hey, my name is Emily Teague. I'm a portrait and fashion photographer based out of Brooklyn, New York, and today is part two of dramatic lighting. In my last video on dramatic lighting, I talked about using shadows to your advantage, thinking about story and emotion, and using color theory. And for today, I'm gonna talk a bit about highlighting specific areas in an image, playing with colors and lighting, and how we can strive to make things different. So jumping right in, let's talk about how we want to highlight different areas. Based on what we covered in the last video on dramatic lighting, we know we're going to want to use a lot of shadow, maybe even primarily shadow, but we also need to somewhat balance this with light. We wanna see at least enough to get an idea of what's going on, to create contrast, and to give emotion. There's a popular Italian term, chiaroscuro, which refers to the intense contrast between light, chiaro, and dark, oscuro. This technique was popularized by artists like Leonardo da Vinci and Caravaggio in the Renaissance period. This kind of intense contrast between light and dark helped create the illusion of three dimensions on a two-dimensional plane. So skipping forward to where we're at now in history, when we're creating images as photographers, we're still working with that two-dimensional plane and still striving to create that illusion of three-dimensional. With all of this said, let's start to imagine our frame in complete darkness first. And if you have the opportunity to use a constant light or you have modeling light on your strobe, you can actually move your light around and move it in and out to see what it's hitting. And you can make creative choices to decide where you want your light to hit too. We know we want primarily shadow, but what features do we want lit here? For me, I know I love the look of cheek and jaw bones being lit. I love that thin strip of light down the nose. Um, I really love maybe a little bit of light in the reflection of the eyes and then moving down the highlight of the neck and collarbones, the middle of the shoulder. These are all contoured areas where highlights fall that look absolutely beautiful against shadow. This kind of high contrast lighting is dynamic and absolutely dramatic. So try highlighting specific areas with minimal lighting. Try using a light source with a modifier that's going to create a narrow spread of light, such as a reflector or snoot. Or if you want to use a softbox that has a wider spread of light, try placing it a bit behind and flagging it off. Um, it could be to the side or above, basically just not straight on because when it's straight on, you're gonna start losing that shadow that we really want. Next up, let's talk about playing with color. So in my last video, I talked a little bit about color theory and how you can make creative choices with the colors that you choose to have in your frame, like your set, your wardrobe, makeup, etc. But what I'd like to talk about this time is how you can also make color choices for your lighting to add to the drama. If you've ever watched a video from me before, there's a good chance you've heard me gush about color connotations and the emotions that each color can bring to images. So be deliberate with the colors that you're choosing, but start trying to add them in through your lighting. Each color can have a totally different dramatic scene. For example, let's look at this bit of teal highlight that I've added to my model and look at it versus when I add this pink light. The teal feels a little uneasy. It's beautiful, but kind of unsettling and seems like the story might involve some danger versus when we look at the pink light, this now feels kind of sultry or flirtatious. Um, it feels a little dangerous, which is good because we want this to be kind of dangerous scene. Danger is a very dramatic emotion, but it gives a totally different feel to it. So maybe you wanna add in a colored light just to the contoured areas of your model, just like we were talking about in our last tip, or your entire image could have different tones of one color or you could combine multiple colors of light too. My big tip here is just be deliberate and think about those colors that you're choosing. Think about which colors are complementary and which ones might feel balanced together. Also think about the brightness of each light color too. Maybe you want that first color to be bold and that second color to be subdued. Or they could be the same level of intensity, just make sure that you're being deliberate through each creative choice that you have. Last tip for this video is to strive to make things different. So if you're choosing to create dramatic lighting, you already have a pretty fun and different job than say traditional headshot lighting. So lean into it. Sit down either before or during your shoot and ask yourself how you can play with that light. What can you do to modify it? Is there a type of material that you can shoot through that's going to create a cool effect? Or do you wanna try flagging part of your light off so it's just a thin strip of light? There's really endless ways to play here. Get an idea for the mood that you want, the lighting that you have available to use, get all of your details in place, and then start thinking or writing down different ways to experiment to create something that feels unique to the story that you're creating. And when I say story, this doesn't have to be something obvious. Creating intrigue and curiosity is great for dramatic portraiture, and your lighting can really help with a potential story. So imagine if we have a model who's looking off into the distance, and let's say there's a little bit of red light falling on her face from the way that she's looking. 
What are we gonna think when we see that? Are we going to wonder where that light's coming from? There can be all sorts of story involved in that too. Another example is maybe you wanna use a light shaping tool like a Cucoloris or a cookie to create shapes with your lighting. So you could create an effect that looks like light coming from window blinds or you could also create a dramatic story through different shapes. Let your lighting create some of the curiosity and really play into that story. And that concludes part two to my dramatic lighting tips. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you liked the video. Let me know anything at all in the comment section and I will see you all next time.